All right. Thank you again for everyone uh, for joining us tonight at the Assistance New User Webinar Part One, Learning the Basics for Jump Math Teachers. Uh, my name is Dawn Peterson. I'm the Director of Content and Partnerships at Assistance, and I'm happy to be here with you tonight. Just some quick um, etiquette, since we are recording this webinar and making it available to all the other JUMP users who couldn't make it today, please leave your microphone on mute for the duration of the webinar. You can choose to have your video on or off, whatever you're comfortable with, and please use the chat um, throughout the presentation to ask any questions, any wonderings. If you need to see something demonstrated again on our screen, um, we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, this session will be interactive tonight, um, so if you already have a verified uh, teacher account in assistments, have that ready. You can even open it up on another window and sign into your account. If you don't have a verified teacher account set up yet, or if you're a Canvas user who hasn't set up an account yet, we do have a demo account that Carrie, um, our chat moderator, who I'll introduce in a minute, will share in the chat. And you can log in with Google and um, log in with this account, these account details, um, so you can interact um, with the student experience, which we'll be doing in just a little bit. And I'll show you that when we get to that point as well. But just a note, if you already have your account, you can go ahead and sign in on a different window. All right, the goal of today's webinar is that participants will learn the basics of getting started with assistments with Google Classroom or Canvas. I just wanna note at this point that um, in order to use our integration, you do need to be either using Google Classroom or Canvas. We are looking to integrate into other LMS in the future um, and even have a standalone version of assistments. Unfortunately, at this time, I don't have a timeline for those. So at this moment, if you are not using Google Classroom or Canvas as your LMS, um, you won't be able to use assistments at this time. What we're going to be covering today is uh, we're going to start with an overview of what the assistance tool is. Uh, we'll show you how to create an account in assistance if you don't have one already. We'll talk about the steps of creating an assignment, which we call step one. Um, of using assistments. You're going to experience the student experience to see what the student sees when they're completing an assignment. We call that step two. Um, we'll move on to how to use the data to assess class performance. So we'll show you what our data reports look like and how you can use those in your classroom. And then we'll finish up by uh, talking about some tips for getting students set up for success. And just a welcome for anyone who's just joining us, please go ahead and share in the chat who you are, um, where, where you're calling in from today, and um, why you're excited to get started with assistments. We'd love to hear from you in the chat. So just an introduction again, my name is Don Peterson. I'm the Director of Content and Partnerships, a very fancy title. In my past work, I was an eighth grade math teacher here in Massachusetts. That's where I'm sitting right now. And um, I used assistance for 10 years with my students before it kind of uh, grew in, in capacity. Um, so I love sharing my experience and assistance with everyone because it was a tool that I really relied on in my everyday work. Um, and I'm gonna pass it over and introduce Carrie Moy. Hey everyone, my name is Carrie Moy. I'm the program associate here at Assistments. Prior to this role, I taught uh, for 12 years middle school math, um, seventh and eighth graders specifically. And I started using Assistments in the classroom, very similar to Don, and just fell in love with the platform and really excited to share it with you more today. Great, thanks Carrie. And Carrie's gonna be the chat moderator. So again, any wonderings, any questions, anything at all, if you need any resources, anything like that, please post in the chat and Carrie will be monitoring that throughout the presentation. I would also like to, um, to welcome um, Amy Helmstetter, the Director of Sales at Jump Math. Amy, you wanna come on and say hi to everyone? Sure, hi everybody. I'm Amy Helmstetter. I'm the Director of Sales at Jump Math and I help schools order jump math and I also help teachers teach it and I actually have a similar story to Carrie and Dawn in that I was a teacher using jump math in my own classroom before um, moving over to this side of things so happy to be here thanks great thanks Amy and if you have any questions about the jump math curriculum or anything that Amy can answer please go ahead and put that in the chat as well all right, so before we really dive into the four steps of how you're gonna implement assistance in your classroom, we're just gonna go over an overview of what the tool is. All right, so assistments is an evidence-based free, you heard it here first folks, it is a free math 
uh, formative assessment tool. We integrate again into Google Classroom or Canvas at this time, and we save time by offering teachers a library of content, both in-house in built content and high quality curriculum, um, textbook or open up, uh, excuse me, open educational resources all within our free platform. Um, using assistance, we have found and heard from many teachers, fosters a growth mindset in students. We'll talk about the formative experience for students using assistance, but assistance allows students to really grow as, um, as learners because they have multiple opportunities to answer and get feedback as they work. Um, why use assistance? You heard it, Carrie and I are both as former assistance users. Um, assistance um, gives regular and timely feedback to students as they are working on their assignment. Um, the teacher is going to get daily formative data to help target instruction. And I'm gonna show you what those data reports look like today. Um, these data reports also quickly identify which students are going to need the most intervention um, while others are getting that feedback right from our platform. And um, assistance increases student engagement by keeping them informed on their progress, whether you are working in the classroom, hopefully you are, or whether you may have to be working remotely or hybrid during the school year, um, students are getting that regular feedback as they're working, and, um, and we've heard it from students that they really enjoy that experience. Um, don't believe me? Well, we are a uh, research proven tool. We have a tier one rating, one of only three middle school math interventions with strong evidence by Evidence for ESSA. So we're so proud to be able to say that. Um, this was based on the results of an assistance randomized control trial in the state of Maine. And the results of that, um, of that study showed that there was 75% more learning in classrooms that used assistance compared to other classrooms that were not using assistance regularly. Also, assistance narrowed the achievement gap, which highlights that assistance is really a great tool to help support learning loss, which is a very timely um, topic right now, of course, with COVID. All right, um, and we right now we have over, over 20,000 teachers in the US that are using assistance. And what we hear from teachers is that they love using assistance because like I said before, there's no need to find different types of practice problems that are aligned um, on the internet. You're getting immediate feedback um, for students that focuses their attention on what they're doing. And also um, the teachers are getting that immediate data that they can use right there in their classroom that helps, to, um, helps them to identify students who need um, help and focus the most. All right, so let's talk about this four step routine. So these four steps right here are basically the same four steps that any teacher is going to take when they're assigning independent practice to their students. Step one is that the teacher assigns their work. Maybe it's the form of a worksheet, maybe it's a Google Doc, whatever your current routine is. Um, step two is the student completes the assignment. Step three, and this is the part most teachers and educators hate the most is that they're grading, getting that red pen out and scoring manually. And then step four is the exciting part where we get to use the data to inform instruction. So assistance is basically just a routine which we have uh, layered over what you're already doing in your classroom. So step one of an assistance routine is that the teacher assigns content from the assistance content library. And we're gonna highlight in just a minute what we have for jump math material. Step two is as the student does their work, they're getting immediate feedback as they complete their assignment. They know if they're right, they know if they're wrong, they know if they need some more support from the teacher. Step three, instead of grading and getting that red pen all over your hand, instead of scoring, the teacher is going to get an automate, automatically scored um, report, which uh, the teacher can then analyze, see what students need support, see what questions need support. And then step four, the teacher shares the data with the students and uses it to take action. So we're going to go through three out of the four of these steps today, and this is my first plug that we are going to have a part two of this webinar, which is really going to focus on step three and four, getting that data and what to do with it. All right, so let's take it back to step zero. If you don't have an account yet, I'm going to walk you through that right now. Um, just to clarify, again, uh, we integrate into Google Classroom and Canvas. 
If you're a Google Classroom user, in order to get a verified account in assistance, you either need to be authorized as a teacher in your school's G Suite, or we can manually verify you within 24 hours if you uh, give us some verification that you are a teacher. So if you have any questions about getting verified, if you're not sure, please go ahead and email us at contact at assistance.org. And Carrie magically usually puts that right in the chat after I say it. So thank you, Carrie. Um, and, and we'll get you set up. If you're a Canvas user, you do need to have an institutional Canvas account versus the free individual teacher account. There is a little bit of work that your Canvas administrator needs to set up prior to teachers being able to assign. So if you are a Canvas teacher, first thing you should do is uh, access these directions, um, which Carrie is also putting in the chat, sending those over to your Canvas administrator so they can get some scope set up and some different things plugged in, and then you'll be good to go. All right, so the way that each one of these steps is going to work, guys, is I am going to go live. I'm going to demo what each one of these steps looks like, and then we'll come back to the slide deck and we'll recap and then see if there's any questions. So I'm going to kick us off by just showing you how you go ahead and create that account, and I'll do this both in Google and Canvas. So I'm starting here at the assistance website, and I'm going to click on sign up in the upper right hand corner of the screen. You'll then be prompted to log in with Google or Canvas. So first I'm gonna start with Google. You'll be asked to sign in with the existing credentials associated with your Google Classroom account. So uh, again, that's important that you are, hold on, I always mistype this. Oh, uh, okay, sorry about that guys. We got this big long login. Um, it's important that you log in with that account. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to sign right to your Google Classroom. So hopefully, if you have a computer where everything is saved, it will automatically log you right in. First time you log in, you will be uh, prompted to create an account. It's just going to link together your Google and your and your uh, your assistance account, and then you'll be all set. I know I'm logged in here because now I'm in the assistance application. You can see all the content folders here and you see your name and account details in the upper right hand corner of your screen. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for Canvas. This is really the big uh, part that's different between the two LMS and then most of the other steps are going to align very clearly. So again, I'll show you what this looks like for Canvas. So I'm prompted to log in with my LMS. So I'm going to choose Canvas at this point. Um, again, if you your Canvas administrator has not set up the integration, you're going to be stuck. The instructions are down here as well that you can forward over to your um, to your admin team. Um, but if you already know your um, institution's Canvas URL, oh gosh, there it is. Um, you can go ahead and log in. You'll be prompted to log in with your Canvas credentials. Need to have these written down on the side. Here we go. And uh, don't be alarmed. Every time you log in with Canvas, you will have to authorize that connection. Um, that's just an extra security setting that Canvas has. And once again, you know you're in because you can see all of our content folders here and you see your name and account settings in the upper right hand corner of the screen. All right. So just to recap that back in the deck, you're always going to start at assistance.org when you are getting ready to assign to your classes. You're going to choose your LMS. You'll be prompted to log in with Canvas or Google, and you're using your already existing credentials. All right, we'll have a question break after I get through part one, I promise, but any questions you have, please put them right in the chat. So now I'm going to walk you through step one, which is where the teacher assigns online from the assistance content library. So we're going to uh, play the role of James Wilson during this presentation and see what it's going to be like for a first time assistance user who uses jump math for his curriculum, what it's going to look like for him as he gets started with assistance. So first, he needs to find out what kind of content that there is to assign from the content library. So uh, for jump math uh, assignments, and I'll demo this for you in just a minute, um, we have jump math content from grades three all the way through eight. All of these assignments are available to assign online through Google or Canvas. 
The teacher is going to get that uh, data report on a class and student level. Students are going to get immediate feedback, um, and um, and they are available to assign in both practice and test mode, which I'll talk more about in a minute. So what we have in the assessments platform is the unit quizzes and tests, again from grades three through eight. We have the um, jump math benchmark assessments from grade three through eight. And then there are benchmark prep questions starting at grade six through grade eight. So just to um, talk about formative versus test mode, and actually we changed this to practice versus test mode. So practice mode is basically everything I've been describing up to this point. Students gonna get immediate feedback. They have multiple opportunities to arrive at the correct answer, earning partial credit. They're going to be basically able to track how they're doing as they complete their work. We also have something called test mode. So if you are looking for a more summative experience where students are just inputting their answers, they're not seeing how they do in that moment, and maybe even you don't want them to kind of track their work even after they finished, that's when you're going to want to use test mode. So I'll show you how you can enable test mode in just a minute. But since these are assessments, um, some teachers may want to use more of that practice uh, experience. Some teachers might want to use that testing experience. So I'm going to actually turn it over to Amy now, and she's going to talk a little bit more about Jump Math. And then I'm going to go into my demo and show you how to assign in the assessments platform. Yeah, so Jump Math is a nonprofit organization founded on the mission that you can actually help minimize inequity in the world through math, because it's based on cognitive science on how kids learn and the notion that if you teach in a certain way, you actually don't have to let kids slip through the cracks and you can actually help kids uh, catch up. So let's talk about that, how we do that a little bit. Essentially, this is our approach. We call it guided discovery. So essentially what you do when you're teaching any concept is teach in small bursts. So just teach for a few minutes and then you want the kids to practice right away so that you can gain uh, insight into how they're doing and get that feedback. While they're practicing, teachers can assess and decide if they need to scaffold a little bit, slow down, or maybe provide bonus questions for kids who need to move more quickly. So this is how you can kind of differentiate while you're teaching. And then as you understand that you've closed some of those gaps for kids, you can increase the level incrementally and move to the next part of the lesson where you'll teach for just a little bit before moving on. Yeah, that's good. Essentially it's extreme scaffolding, making sure that you get kids where you need them and don't let them slip through the cracks. Um, we have quizzes and unit tests on assessments. Quizzes are available in printed format too, but we've digitized them with the help of assessments. And they are short check-ins that you give every three or four lessons. And they give teachers formative data throughout the unit. They're available to assign in practice or test mode on assessments, which Don will talk about. Unit tests happen approximately at the end of each unit. You can give those, um, there are one or sometimes two right at the end of the unit, and you can use those for summative data if you want. A lot of folks like to use those more as report card data, but also you can use them, of course, as formative data to in inform your instruction, they're available to assign in practice or test mode. So maybe yeah, we'll Amy, sorry, I just realized that. I wrote mattered content that should be mastered content, right? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> uh, so we also have and this is kind of new, we developed these specifically for the platform of assessments, we have benchmark prep questions and benchmark assessments. So for every grade grades three to eight, there are three benchmark assessments. They're cumulative. They build up to that point in the program. You can find out where you should give them on our pacing guides, which are downloadable from the Jump Math website. And essentially those are kind of more summative checking in with them. They're designed specifically for the digital platform and they're create, they were created to look a lot like state test questions. So these are great ways to see how are you moving towards those types of questions. They have 
you know, multiple steps that the kids have to solve, a little bit more problem solving in some ways. Um, then for grades six to eight, we also have benchmark prep questions. And these are essentially a suite of questions on assessments that you can pick and choose from. Those you can kind of pick and choose from to build up to the benchmark assessments. If you wanna kind of practice some of those skills, you'll look at the you know, benchmark A prep questions and you'll see that they're related to benchmark A, but they're more sort of skill-based rather than a larger problem solving set. So those, that's what those are for. And I think Don will talk a little bit about how you can find times to integrate those into your program. Yeah. All right. Thanks, All right. Amy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just, just uh, for the know, we also have some in-house build content and some release date tests available in assistance. So if you are looking some, for some supplemental problems, in addition to what you're assigning from those unit tests, quizzes, benchmarks that uh, Amy just talked about, we have some skill builders and problem solving sets. Um, these are both aligned by grade level and, um, and common core strand. Um, skill builders are mastery based, which means once students get three in a row correct, they place out. Um, and then problem solving sets, just an extra bank of questions. And for release date tests, um, we have a, a lot in Massachusetts and New York, but it's a place that you can go just find additional practice problems to assign to your students. All right, so again, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna demo live and then we'll come back to the slide deck and review. So um, I'm gonna show you a little bit about where to find the content and the different ways that you can assign. So once we're in the assistance app, which means that you have successfully logged into your account, um, here you can navigate all of the content that we have. Notice we have the jump math folder here, which has all of the grade levels organized. Um, we can look at part one quizzes or part two quizzes and test, um, and then for the benchmarks. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how to do the initial assigning step here. So I'm gonna click right through the folders. Hopefully this organization mirrors what you'd be used to if you were looking through a teacher manual or the Jump Math website, and I'm gonna click right in. Here you'll see all of the questions that are in this individual quiz. So at this point, you can choose to assign all of the problems or you can just make a selection that you'd like to assign. So I'm just gonna choose a couple problems in here. Notice that some of these questions have multiple parts in them. Um, and if they do, they're gonna be marked A and B and part C. Um, so I just made a selection of three problems and I have a choice. I can now assign to this class right now, or I can save to my problem sets. So if you're doing a little bit of pre-work, if you're um, assigning a few assessments ahead of time, um, you can definitely do that and save to my problem sets. What's gonna happen is it's going to ask you for a title. So I might call this jump quiz for Monday, make it something real clear, save that here. And that's gonna allow me to go back and add other questions at my leisure or go back in and assign that at a later date. And anything you assign to, excuse me, save to my problem sets will exist right over here. I'm actually gonna show you the other option now, which is um, just assign to class at this moment. Once we assign to class, we're gonna arrive at the assign time options. So the assign time options are going to allow you to change the assignment name. So I'm just gonna to add to the end of this right here. This is September 28th, I think. Um, choose your LMS. The first time you use assistments, you're going to import the classes that already exist in your LMS and then synchronize. So that's going to allow you to pull all of the classes that already exist into assistments. Let me just X out of here. And now I can assign to one or multiple classes at a time. I'm just going to choose that one. If you want to assign in test mode, you're going to toggle this switch here. Um, and that'll give that more summative experience that I explained. Couple other choices, um, you can choose the problem order. So for tests and quizzes, you might want them to go in that linear order, exactly the order that you see them in the problem set. But if you're doing this maybe virtually or you know, even in class, um, you might wanna scramble these and have them delivered in random order to your students or student choice. Student choice more resembles state testing where students will see all the questions at once and they can pick and choose the order that they complete the problems in. I'm just gonna assign linear for right now. And then you can uh, delay the release by choosing a release date. And then you can set a due date um, that'll be relayed to students on this uh, LMS side. 
those can be left blank. I'm gonna go ahead and assign to class. And there we go. Um, when I'm done, I will see that assignment appear both in the My Assignments tab of your assistance account. And I'll come back to that, that's uh, spinning. Uh, it also is gonna show up in your LMS. So let me just show you this real quick. It's having me log in one more time. All right, so that assignment right here will show up both in the Google Stream and in the Classwork tab right here. And then again, back in your assistance account, there we go. Um, there's that assignment that I just posted. And just to note that in my assignment, you can also filter by class, kind of organize yourself by uh, upcoming released or past due status, and then by release or due date. Before I get into the student experience, there's one other thing I want to show you, a different way that you can find and assign problems and assessments. Let me just go back here. There we go. Another way is um, you can search by standard. So if you are looking for supplemental questions that are aligned to a certain standard that you're teaching in class, you can go ahead and either start typing in a description or start typing in a common core skill code. And this is going to search the entire assessments library across different contents and find you lots of different problems that are aligned to that skill. So again, you're going to choose the problems you want to assign. And then you can assign to class right now, or you can just save that to use at a later time. All right, in Canvas, I just want to show you real quick, Canvas is going to be essentially the same exact thing. Everything I just showed you is going to be the same, um, except where it shows up in your LMS. So I just want to show you that piece. So if you are a Canvas teacher, you're going to see the assessments assignments show up here. And then there'll be a link within that assignment that will give you access to, um, to the report, and it'll give students access to the assignment. All right, so let me come back here. So there's two ways to search by uh, to search our assessments content. One is by searching through our curriculum folders, finding that jump math quiz or benchmark or practice set that you want and assigning um, either now or saving to my problem sets. The other is searching by standard. So using our search box here, typing in a common core description or code, and that's going to find lots and lots of problems across different curricula that are aligned to that standard that you can choose for for supplemental practice. So now that you know where everything is, let's talk about how uh, to assign. And I just went through this. So for interest of time, I'm just going to kind of pass through this a little bit quickly. Um, so you're always going to start at find and assign. You'll find the problems you want. Um, let me just go through here. Assign time options will be uh, changing the name, which is optional, choosing your LMS, importing your class. This is an important step. When you first start, you want to import and then synchronize to make sure everything is up to date. Test mode is going to give that more summative experience for your students. Um, and then you can choose problem order, set a release date, or set a due date. And again, those two last ones are optional. All right, so we're just gonna take a three minute break and I'm gonna give you an opportunity just to take a breather, see if you have any questions in the chat, um, give you a moment to kind of explore those folders, see if any questions pop up as you're doing that. Um, and then we'll jump back in and start talking about the student experience. So go ahead and just take a break, see if you have any questions and please share those with us. And I will just show you real quick, just as you're exploring, um, if you do go to explore content, I'm sorry, if you go to assign to class and you're not seeing that test mode option, you're going to go to your account settings, down to features and, uh, excuse me, feature settings, and then you want to click off enable test mode. So that's going to allow you to um, assign things in test mode, again, if you're looking for that more summative experience. Once again, go to your account settings, choose feature settings, and you want to enable test mode.
All right, we'll do about 60 more seconds. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to share those in the chat. All right, great. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on. I'm not seeing any questions come in, but don't let that stop you. Please feel free to share those if those come up. All right, so now we're going to get into step two, the experience where students get immediate feedback as they complete their work. So checking back in on James, James wants to know what his students' experience is going to look like in assistance so that he can best support positive uh, student culture around the platform. So right now we're gonna give you a chance before I demo it for you, I wanna give you a chance to play around and experience what the student experience is. So this is where you either need to be logged into your own assistance account or our, our samples teacher account. So Carrie is sharing a link in the chat. So you're gonna go ahead and click on that link. Again, make sure you're logged into either your own account or our sample teacher account. Once you're here, you can see all the questions. And if you click on the triple dot next to select all, you can preview problem set as student. This will only show up if you're logged in as a teacher. So that's why we gave you that sample account. So once you do that, oh, it's not working for me right now. Hopefully that works for you. Once you log in, um, that will show you the student experience and you can walk through, see what kind of feedback you're gonna get. I'll show that one more time in case anyone needs to see it. So once you click that link in the chat, click on the triple dot next to select all, preview as student, and you can walk through, take a look at what kind of feedback that you uh, students are gonna get. Um, and I'll give you about two or three minutes. There's only about four or five questions in here. So we'll come back and I'll, I'll demo it for you, but let us know if there's any questions. All right, we'll do another 60 seconds or so. Feel free to get it wrong, get it right, play the student, try out our different features for that open response question, and then we'll come back and I'll walk you through it and talk a little bit more about it.
All right. Thanks, everybody. Hopefully um, that was enough time. I'm so bad about setting timers. So I try to <laughs> mentally think of that was 60 seconds or not. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what this is going to look like from the student experience from start to finish. So I'll start with um, with Google. Actually, I'll start with Canvas just to show you what it's going to look like, and then I'll do the rest of the demo in uh, Google. So I'm in a, a student account. Um, nope. Now I'm in a student account for Canvas, here we go. So I'm on the assignments tab. So the student's gonna see all of their assignments. And like I showed you earlier, um, the assignments that are assessments assignments are going to have a link within. So when the student clicks on this link, they will be first asked to log in um, if their computer hasn't already um, logged in with their credentials. But most students' computers already have this saved for them. Let's see, make sure I have that right. Verify it's you. Okay. It's it goes through. I don't know why it's asking me for that extra layer of verification. But once the student clicks on this, they'll just be prompted to log in with their Canvas credentials. And then they'll be in the student experience, which I'll show you in just one moment. So in uh, Google Classroom, it's going to be very similar. The student's going to see their assignment show up both in the stream and in the classwork tab. Let me just refresh my screen here. Oh, it's asking me to log in. I got so many accounts open, guys, I'm sorry. All right, there we go. So the student's gonna see that assignment in their stream and also in their classwork tab. So when they click into the assignment, they may be asked to log in again, again, depending on their, um, their saved settings on their computer. And here we are in the student experience. So the student gets to see how many questions, just like you did a moment ago. Uh, they get to see their progress on each question, which indicates how many attempts it took them. And I'll show you in just a minute, they're gonna get that immediate feedback. So if the student gets the answer right the first try, they get that positive feedback they know they're right and they can move on to the next problem. If they don't get it right on the first try, they're given the message that they can try again. The progress bar does go down, just indicating they didn't get it right the first attempt, but they can try again. And if they get it correct, eventually they will be get, get that positive uh, feedback and they, they can move on. For this problem right here, this is a tricky one. Um, so maybe they weren't in class the day that the teacher went over different um, integer rules and things like that. Um, so we do have a show answer button here. The purpose of the show answer button is that if a student is honestly stuck, they can be provided the answer so that they can progress with the assignment. Here I have an example of an open response question. So there's lots of show your work or draw a picture, give a visual, something like that. So here students can either type in their answer, they can embed a picture. And actually um, later this week, we actually have a new feature coming out where we will have an embedded drawing tool. So uh, students can draw a picture and it'll embed right here in the um, open response box. They can use our math editor for entering more complex math type, and then they can insert a table of values here. Because this is an open response question, students are not gonna get immediate feedback, even in practice mode, but the teacher will have the option to go back in, leave uh, a score and leave feedback that the student can get at a later time. All right, and I'll just finish us off with that. So that's what the student experience looks like. When the students finish, they are going to be able to see a student report, which again, I noted that eventually you'll be able to turn off if you don't want them to see this in test mode. Um, but the student can review the questions here. They can see how they performed, what their score is, and they can um, also see how the class performed. Just my first note here is that this score in assessments is not typically um, uh, used as a, uh, a grade for most of our teachers, as it is formative. Um, so think about how you might use this score, whether it's going to be on a, a effort-based point scale. If you are going to use it as a form, excuse me, as a summative assessment, make sure that that gets messaged to both families and students. All right. Back to the slide deck here. So one more time, assessments, uh, students are going to access their assignment right through their LMS, logging in with their existing credentials. Just like I mentioned for teachers a few minutes ago, uh, students will be asked to create a new account the first time they uh, log into assessments. No additional information will be collected from them. 
Um, the student view of the assignment is going to uh, give a progress tracker here on the left. Students are gonna submit their answers, getting feedback as they work. If we're talking about practice mode, show answer is available so that they can move on if they are stuck. The feedback that they get is correct or incorrect. Um, and again, here's what that correct answer looks like when the student presses show answer. I assure you teachers and educators that if a student presses show answer, you will know it on the report so you can um, figure out what you're gonna do with that student. Um, here's just an example of what student choice looks like if you're looking for that experience where they see all the problems and they can pick and choose. Um, so something you might wanna try out if you wanna let them pick the order that they complete their work. And of course, the student assignment report I just showed you allows students to review what they did. Uh, they can see what their score is. And this is also where students are going to get any feedback that their teacher leaves for them on open response questions. All right, any questions coming up in the chat, Carrie? None right now. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to go ahead and move on, but please post any questions as you have them. And we're going to move on to step three. So uh, step three is where the teacher analyzes data instead of grading. So now that James understands the student experience, he needs to learn how to interpret the resulting data he will receive on the assignments, uh, assistance assignment report. That's a tongue twister. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of walk you through one of the reports and assessments. And here's my second plug that um, Part two of this webinar, which will happen in two weeks on October 5th, I believe, um, will really be covering a lot more of the data piece. So right now you're just gonna get an overview. So there's two ways for the teacher to access data. One is right through the LMS. So when the teacher clicks on the assignment in Google Classroom in their teacher account, they're going to see the assessments data report. Note that when the students clicked on that very same link, they were brought to the student experience. That's why we wanna make sure we get you as a verified teacher. In Canvas, same thing. When the teacher logs in, they're gonna click into the assignment. They're going to see that assessments link. They click in, they're brought to the assignment report. The other way, which I think is a much easier way, is going right through your assessments account. So when you click on my assignments in your assessments account, you'll be given a list of every assignment across all the classes um, that you've assigned. Um, when you open up one of those assignments, you'll have the option to view report. At a glance though, you can see how many students completed the assignment, how many problems, release and due dates, and any aligned standards. So when I click in here, let's take a look at what we get to see. Again, just an overview. If you need more, come back in a couple of weeks. So here we get to see um, our progress cards right here, uh, which is gonna show you how many students did not start the assignment, how many students were in progress, and how many students completed the assignment and when they completed it. Down here, we have a performance summary. So we get to see again at a glance um, which questions uh, students did not get correct on their own and had to press show answer. Um, the nice way we say that is incorrect. So the red indicates show answer. Correct eventually means they got it right on the second, third, fourth, fifth try on their own. And then of course, uh, green is correct. So this will be able to uh, show teachers where what problems need the most support. And then down here, we have the detailed report. We get to see the average score for the entire assignment for the whole class. Each column represents another question that was assigned, um, and then the average for that individual problem. Each one of these rows represents a different student and how they performed on this assignment. I'm going to go ahead and unhide these names just so I can see some additional information here. Um, all of these um, cards in here are going to tell you if a student got it right on the first try, on the second, third, or fourth try. And then again, red means that they did not get it right on their own, and then they need to uh, press show answer. A couple other things, and then we're going to go back because we're running a little bit late. Um, we get to see how much time the students spent. Um, we can click into the actual questions if you need to review those, of course, and toggle through. And on this view is where you're going to see what the correct answer is, so you don't have to have all those answer keys memorized, and then another breakdown of the score. If you're looking for a little bit more detail on individual student work, um, for example, the student got a 43, you can click on that student's name, 
and that's going to bring you to the student details report. This is literally a play by play of how students performed. So how long it took for them to for each one of the attempts, um, whether they got it right the first, second, third try, what their incorrect attempts were. And then this is also one place that you can score open response work. You can toggle through students up here at the top. And this is a nice level of detail that you may not need for every assignment, but it's nice to have it when it's needed. All right. Um, and one last thing I want to highlight is uh, common wrong answers. If there was a common wrong answer for an individual question, that's going to be highlighted here. The first number is the common wrong answer, and then the percentage is the percentage of I was tongue twister this, the percentage of students who got it wrong, who gave this incorrect answer. So it's a nice way to do my favorite no activities or just to know where common misconceptions were um, in your class. All right, so again, you're going to access that class data either right through your LMS by clicking on the assistance link or by going right to my assignments in your assistance account and finding the assignment you want to access data for. The assignment report is going to give you student progress cards, the whole detailed report where you can get down to the student level and a performance summary. Down in the detailed report, you get to see the whole class score, the whole class average by question, and then individual student scores. And all these bubbles in here tell you about the number of attempts it took the student to arrive at the correct answer. Um, the standards report I kind of breeze by right now because currently the jump math content is not yet tagged by skill. That's something that our team is working on. So when it is tagged by skill, you'll be able to um, actually look at the standards report, which is just the second tab on the report. And it's going to tell you how many questions in each quiz, benchmark, whatever is aligned to that individual standard um, and give you a score for that standard. So if you do standards, Grace Bade, uh, standards based grading or just looking to check off the standards um, that'll be available hopefully um, later on this fall. All right, so um, we are actually going to move through this last part a little bit quickly. I apologize. I wasn't um, checking in on time earlier in the presentation, but just a couple ways to get started. Um, so if you're thinking about using that data report tomorrow, the next day before that next part of a webinar, we just have some key ideas that you could get started with. And one is the class average. So when you look at that class average on the assignment report, that's going to quickly assess whether the whole class understood the content on the assignment whether that was a quiz or whether that was a unit test. The individual problem average is going to identify which individual problems need whole class review. I remember when I was using, um, or before I used assistance, I would say, put your hand up if you need help with question one. How about question two? And gosh, was that tedious. So assistance does all that for you, lets you know what needs to be reviewed with the whole class. Common wrong answers help to facilitate um, conversations with your class about common misconceptions and gives you some insight on where students are having difficulties as well. And then individual student scores by problem at this point identify students in need of small group reviewing and reteaching. So we're actually going to skip through this, but an activity very similar to this is going to be in part two. So I hope to see you there. And Carrie, any questions before we kind of get into our wrap up section that I can help with? Um, nope, I just answered it. So when you look at the report, it will show up in the original order, not the order that the students completed it. So whatever is the first problem in that quiz will be the first problem in the report. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying. So that's if, uh, if you're choosing uh, random order, it's always going to show in linear order on the report. Yeah. All right. So just a couple ways to start thinking about what your entry point might be to incorporate assistance into your regular daily jump math routine. So one is that you could start, if you are a grade six through eight teacher, um, you could start by assigning the benchmark prep questions through assistance to monitor student progress and address common misconceptions in real time. The assistance report does um, update live. So you could walk around your classroom, refresh that report, see how students are doing and give students um, the help that they need at that moment. 
You might also uh, finish lessons by assigning a question from an upcoming test or quiz as a cool down to get a snapshot of student thinking at that moment, and then use the data in the report to highlight teaching uh, reteaching opportunities the next day in class. If you see students with a low average, uh, maybe even pairing up students who did well with a student who did poorly to review and refresh. And one other thought, just as an entry point, you might start with just assigning your unit tests and quizzes through assessments, which is going to allow you to quickly assess both whole class and individual student understanding on that assessment, rather than the old REN pen and paper routine. And just a note about uh, the paper routine, Amy mentioned that all of the unit tests and quizzes are available in paper form, so you might have students do their work on paper and then submit their work through assessments, which is something I always did so that I could get that data, but students can work on paper as they're more comfortable with. All right, so a couple tips. I'm going to try to get you out of here right at six, so sorry if I'm going a little speedy, but post in the, in the chat if you need to see something one more time. So just some tips for introducing assessments to your student. James understands the basics, hopefully you do too, and he needs some help getting his students comfortable with the platform. So we have a whole bunch of tips for success that I'd love to share with you now. Tip one is uh, we have created some getting started student tutorials, one for Canvas and one for Google Classroom that you can share with your students. And it basically just walks them through what the experience is like, what kind of feedback, what, what happens if you press show answer and allows them to play around with the open response questions um, as well. I'm sorry. It'll uh, walk them through the open response questions as well. Um, so all these links that I'm going to show you right now will be available to you in the morning in the slide deck when I send that out. Tip two is make the first assignments low stakes. You probably don't want to assign your first assessments assignment as a unit test. It might stress the students out. They don't know what they're doing. Um, but we have created some student practice assignments, which again, it gives a hands-on experience, has kind of silly little math questions and guides them through what the experience is. So they understand the platform before they're doing an assignment, which the data is going to be really valuable for the teacher. Tip three is we have created an open response tutorial. So students know all of the different tools and all the different buttons that are available to them in the open response uh, window. And just another note that we do have coming out later this week, uh, that embedded drawing tool um, that students will be able to play around with. So definitely check that out later this week. That's a, a great update. And tip four, I mentioned this earlier, is make clear to students how you're using that score in assessments. If you are using this formatively, we encourage you not to use the score as a grade because students will be um, deterred from those multiple attempts and they might press show answer more than needed. So giving them that opportunity to arrive at the correct answer and still that still be celebrated is something we feel really strongly about at assessments. All right, so wrap up. I don't see any questions. So we got five minutes left and I'm getting you out of here. So today we talked about how to get set up with that account. If you have a colleague who hasn't set up their account, hopefully you can share this slide deck and recording with them. We talked about how to create an assignment, what the student experience looks like. And just a reminder, you can always check out that student experience just by clicking into any assignment at all and clicking over here next to the um, select all, and you can play the student for any problem set before you assign it to your class. We talked about how to access the data. Uh, we have a quick overview of the data, but come back in a couple of weeks and we'll be talking into uh, more about how to use that data in your classroom. We talked about a couple entry points for using uh, jump material with assessments, and then just some getting started tips to get your students comfortable with assessments. All right, there we go. So uh, we have a quick um, uh, feedback survey we'd love for you to take. Uh, we are a free tool. Uh, our webinar offerings are free as well. So if you could take a minute now or as I'm finishing up with the, the rest of the uh, close up to, uh, to get that done, that would be super helpful. We love the feedback from anyone who joins our webinars. Uh, and please make sure to choose 928. And this is the new user webinar part one for Jump Math Teachers. 
All right, so I've plugged it a few times. Here's the details one more time so you can see it. We do have our part two webinar called A Deep Dive on Data, and that is actually on uh, October 12th. So I apologize for saying the fifth earlier. Um, if you sign up, we'd love to see you there. Um, if you sign up, you're still gonna get that recording sent to you the next day. And we always post our webinars in our webinar library here. So if you can't check us out live, you can always check us out um, in the assistance webinar library. And I think that'll be hosted somewhere on the Jump Math website as well at some point. Um, some other upcoming webinars that I just wanna highlight is uh, if you heard when I was talking about skill builders really quickly and you wanna learn more, those are those mastery baits, common core line sets. Um, later in October, we actually have a 30 minute session dedicated just to skill builders and everything you need to know. And then at the end of October, we have a, um, a targeted webinar called Using Assistance to Address Unfinished Learning. Um, and that's gonna feature teachers who have used assistance through the pandemic and who are sharing how they're using assistance in their classroom. All right. Uh, I encourage you to visit our website to get more resources. Our help center has FAQs, our webinar library. In addition to that, we'd love to see you join our Facebook user community. Um, people are posting different ideas. Carrie shares different resources in there. And you can always ask questions about assistance right there. So I think Carrie's going to share that in just a minute as well if you're a Facebook user. And um, again, because I wanna get you out here on time, I'm gonna skip that last prompt and just follow up with, um, if you have any questions at all about using assistance in your classroom or support issues, if you run into any uh, errors or anything like that, we're so happy to, um, to help you out. You can always email contact at assistance.org. And if you have any questions specifically for Jump Math about ordering materials, getting Jump in your school, you can email amy.helmstetter at jumpmath.org. So with that, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Um, again, you'll get a recording and the slide deck from today's presentation uh, in your mailbox tomorrow. And we hope to see you back in a few weeks um, for part two. And um, here we go, I'll stop. And thank you, Amy, for joining tonight. And Amy will be back with us next time as well. And uh, thanks for coming, everyone. <laughs> thanks, Don. Have a great Saturday. afternoon or evening. <laughs>